Are we rolling? Rolling, 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 rolling. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today, we are going to be doing an unboxing, first reports review of the Elegoo Century Carbon. Stay tuned. So one thing I noticed when I picked this up and put it on the table, it is not a light machine, which is promising. Heavier is better. So first up, we have a quite a thick manual, multilingual. We have a, a user guide. And the user guide is very much slimmed down version of the manual. <laughs> so I will, I'll pop it on the floor. And we shall proceed to remove the foam. We have a glass lid, more foam. <sighs> So this is a struggle, you know. <laughs> I'd recommend getting somebody to help you do that bit. So, let's get the bag off. More foam holding a box of goodies. So there we have the machine. And inside here, we have a screen, we have a spool holder, a kettle lead, and some tools, grease, glue stick, screwdriver, a little bit of filament, USB drive. We shall now refer to the manual, well, the user guide. First off, I will remove the tape. Be careful here, because the ribbon cable for the screen is stuck to that tape, so don't just whoosh, rip the tape clean off, because that would give you a very bad time. And then, on the bottom of the screen are instructions on how to fit the screen. So basically, carefully take the ribbon cable, which is very, very awkward because it's set in a recess so you can't really see what you're doing. There we go. We have popped that in. Just guide the cable back into the cutout, locate the lugs, slide it down. So on the extruder, oversized cable tie. Holding a bit of cardboard in place. So we shall remove that, remove that foam there. So for those of you that have seen unboxings and whatever of this machine already, you will be aware that there's a little bit of mystery going on. Mystery. So the first thing I've noticed is that this is the first time I've ever seen this machine in the flesh. There is a poop chute with an actual flap and a nozzle scrubber. There isn't any clarity over this. And what does this do here? Do we remove the sticker? Or does that sticker stay on? I don't know. I shall leave it on for now. The other thing that we need to do is remove the transport screws. A lot of core XY machines now come fitted with transport screws. Three in the case on this one, clearly marked with red arrows. Not the type of fly for this guy in formation, I must add. So I, I'm quite buzzing to see what all the hype is because a lot of people are raving about this machine. And for the price point, if it's as good as everybody's making it out to be, it will be a steal. But just while I'm doing this, I will make some observations. We have linear rails on all axes. The Z is driven by three lead screws and the X and Y are driven by belts. It also appears that we have a filter on the back of the machine. Made of metal. And then a nice glass lid to keep in all that heat. And just to note, there is a sticker on the top of the glass lid. When printing low temperature filaments such as PLA and flexible filaments, please remove the top cover. We have seen this time and time and time again. People think because you've got the lid, use it. If you're printing PLA or PETG or TPU, do not use the lid. You will cause yourself trouble. It will result in clogs in your extruder and all kinds of things that you will blame upon the printer, but are not the printer's fault. And then, voila, final touch. We are done. Now, let us plug this in and see what magic we can make happen. And we are fired up, ready to go. Hello, create the future. That's what we're doing here, folks. We are creating the future. While we're waiting for it to boot up, as far as I'm aware, the print volume for the machine is 256 millimeters cubed. So, high, front to back, left to right. Very similar size to other well-known brands on the market. They do seem to be following a similar pattern. I'm not sure why they think that that is the optimal size, but they do. Right, so we'll go through the setup process. We are not Chinese, we are English. So I shall click English and confirm. Use the hex key to remove the three screws shown in the image. We are one step ahead of the game. Confirm. Welcome to Elegoo. Ensure the chamber is free from foreign objects and click confirm. Is there anybody in there? Nope. Confirm. Now we are gonna do a, a device self-check. Start self-check process. Place the build plate correctly with the side A facing up. 
we have side A. Right, so here on the back side, we've got a little capital A in the corner. And on the other side, we've got a B. That is textured. That is what I would class as satin. Satin. Slightly textured, more textured. So pop that in, click start. So now the nozzle is heating. So basically we're gonna heat the nozzle, heat the build plate, heat break, cooling fan check, main board cooling fan check. Then it'll do its input shaping, followed by the automatic bed leveling process. So it's gonna run through all the steps to do it, self check on itself to make sure everything works as it should. Once it's done that, it will vibrate the living daylights out of itself. And then when it's finished doing that, it will then calibrate and auto level to the bed. So we shall wait for this process to happen, let it finish and uh, then move on to the next step, which will be loading some filaments and running a print. 15 minutes later. Self check complete. Thumbs up, confirm. <gasps> Ooh. We're in the UI. First thing I'm gonna do, I turn on the light. Ooh. So we have got Wi-Fi. What we've done while we were waiting for the machine to calibrate is we thought, me, it's a carbon. There's no point in putting PLA through it. I haven't yet loaded it, but I'm about to load some PCCF. So some polycarbonate carbon fiber filament for our first print. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? We've got a file on here. So I am going to load the filament, I'm printing it straight out of a poly dryer. Link to these will also be in the description, very handy. We are there. Now I don't know what jiggery poker you have to do to load the filament. We have there extruder, preheat the nozzle. We need radioactive temperatures, 280 degrees. I'm gonna let that preheat and then I shall press the extruder button. And all being well, it should extrude some filament, I hope. Maybe it's a good time to consult the manual. My intuition was correct. Yeah, go to the settings. Brings you to this screen. Once you get to this screen, input your temperature for the filament that you are proposing to load. In my case, we want 280 degrees. Wait for the temperature to reach the set value and then click the down button repeatedly until filament starts extruding from your nozzle. I am, while that's doing, I'm gonna move the, the bed down because the nozzle's quite close. There we go. The nozzle's now at temperature, so I can feel the filament being pulled in to the extruder. So I just keep tapping the button like it said until we can see there's some really nice yellow filament coming out. So that'll be what's tested in the factory. Keep going. I mean, I wouldn't keep pressing the button like it suggests. It's still going. <laughs> I think that will do. So we are printing with PCCF, so I shall give it the best possible chance with a light misting of 3D lac. Make sure that's lined up correctly. Shut the door, get the USB, pop it in the front. We'll go to the file menu, USB drive, and there is our Benchy. I shall click on that. It says PC. We've sliced the file in Orca. We haven't obviously set it up yet, so I've just selected a polycarbonate, tweaked it to what I know the best temperature is for the filament we are using. And let us see what happens. Print. It is now preheating. So we'll cut there and we'll come back to you as soon as this is finished. Hopefully not that long. 30 minutes. So, Benchy concluded. I haven't even had a sneak peek yet. I can't see clearly through the door. First off, it estimated 30 minutes print time. It has finished in 29 minutes and 57 seconds to be precise. So I shall click confirm. Takes us back to a nice graphical display. Beautiful. B-E-A beautiful. So open the door. Bear in mind, we are hot. So please, please, don't just go in, pick the plate up, burn your fingers. Oh no. We really have. <laughs> Where should we go from here now, Chris? That's kind of scuppered the video. It was doing all so well. That would probably indicate that I don't need any 3D lac. I mean, I haven't let the bed cool, so that could be another another cause. Besides the, the delamination that I've just caused by ripping it off the bed, the rest of it is bang on. Amazing. This is my fault. Even 3D Steve makes mistakes. Impatience. Let your plate cool. We'll print another one. Let it cool properly and pull that one off. But I mean, overall, the, the quality is, you know, bang on. So the machine does come with a hardened steel nozzle. 
and hardened steel dual gears for the direct drive extruder. So the machine is more than capable, as you've seen, of printing carbon fibre infused filaments with no issue whatsoever. We'll print another bench in the PCCF, again, own brand, we'll put a link to that in the description also. Initial thoughts, I can now see what the hype was about. Everybody was raving about this machine, everybody sang it praises. Overall, my first impressions are very positive. It's well put together, it's very easy to use, intuitive, if you're used to using 3D printers and whatever else, using this isn't going to be a problem for you at all. Self-contained unit, nice sleek looking design that's very easy to use. That file that I've just sliced for the Benchy was literally Orca Slicer, picked a generic PC profile for the filament, tweaked the temperatures, did no other tuning and printed it. Goes to show that if you spend a bit of time, dial your filament in, you'll get a lot better results than what I've just done. But overall, it's a nice bit of kit for very little money, really. Current price for it is £319, a bargain. Very well priced, very affordable. We'll play with it further. We will revisit the machine like we did with all the other machines that we do a first initial unboxing and first thoughts review on. Really put it through its paces and test it a load more. So I'm hoping that we can connect it to Orca, remotely send files to it, remotely monitor prints via a UI web interface but we'll revisit that and come back with that one. But overall, I'm, I'm really impressed. So if you want to see any more about this, drop it in the comments box below and we will do our best in the next video to answer any of those questions or demonstrate anything that you may have asked for. In the meantime, that is it from me. So please don't forget to like, subscribe. And if you really want to share, that would be really, really helpful. So goodbye from me and I will see you on the next one. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.